If you're preparing for a mobile system design interview, there are a few mistakes that can instantly kill your chances, and I see people making them all the time. Today I'm going to show you four of the most common ones and how to easily fix them. All right, let's jump right in. The first common problem is failing to ask questions to clarify requirements and fully understand the problem. I had a mock interview with a really talented Android engineer who had recently graduated from the top technical university. He already had a few big tech internships and two years of work experience before graduating. So I gave him Facebook newsfeed system design problem. I presented a mock-up and briefly explained what needed to be done intentionally leaving some areas ambiguous. He asked just one question, whether we need to implement post creation or not, then immediately jumped into API design and started explaining how he would fetch the newsfeed using REST API and how he would use machine learning to generate recommendations for the newsfeed on the backend. He was really confident and suggested reasonable API endpoint. But the problem was that I actually expected a chronological feed, not a popularity-based one. He forgot to ask how the feed should be sorted. I would have answered that it should be sorted by timestamp, and that would have changed the rest of the conversation. Additionally, he didn't ask about offline support and what kinds of media attachments were allowed, or other important questions about scalability and performance. So, it's extremely important to spend 5 to 10 minutes clarifying requirements – functional ones, non-functional, and what's out of scope. Big tech companies such as Meta and Google intentionally give candidates ambiguous problems and expect them to break them down by asking questions. Moreover, this signal is evaluated in the interview. The interviewer would literally put a check mark or write some notes on how you did in this area. What I usually suggest to my clients is that they imagine themselves as a tech lead talking to a product manager in this part. You need to ask focused question on how the app works and what the requirements are. You don't need to talk about specific implementation details here, such as what database you'll use. You just need to understand how the app works before designing it. So what sort of questions you should ask? Let's divide them into three categories – functional, non-functional and out of scope. First, functional requirements. Here you might ask questions like how is the feed sorted? Do we need to support pull to refresh? Should users be able to view and like posts while offline? And how should conflicts be resolved? Do we need push notifications? Next, non-functional requirements. Here you need to clarify constraints or performance characteristics of the system. For scalability, you might ask questions like how many daily active users do we need to support? What regions are we supporting? Is it only the US or Europe and Asia as well? For performance, you might ask how fast do we need to load the newsfeed? How frequently is the data updated? Do we need to optimize network requests to reduce network usage? Other good questions to ask. Do we need to optimize for battery usage? Should likes use strong data consistency or eventual consistency? And what are the security requirements? Finally, the last category is out of scope. Things that you are not designing in this interview, but can assume they exist. The most common out of scope features are authentication and localization. It's better to ask explicitly, can I assume that authentication is out of scope? Asking these questions gives you more information to design a relevant architecture and provide the right signal to the interviewer. All right, moving on. The second common mistake is not using or even mentioning modern mobile frameworks in the interview. That means not talking about Swift UI, Async Await, and Combine on iOS, and Jetpack Compose and Kotlin Coroutines on Android. I had a mock interview with a very experienced engineering manager from a FANG company, and he was preparing to move to another FANG company. So I gave him a flight booking app problem. He was doing exceptionally well, but when I asked him how he would pass 
data between layers of the app, he said that he would use completion blocks or delegates on iOS. And that was an acceptable answer, of course. But I still asked, are there any other ways to do this? He didn't know what to say, and that was a problem. So I definitely suggest you research and add those modern frameworks to your interview toolbox. You don't have to use them in your design, but it would be a plus if you mention them as part of your alternatives analysis. For example, you could say, on iOS, I'd consider Swift UI for fast iteration, but UIKit if we need more customization and flexibility. If you're not familiar with Swift UI or Jetpack Compose, you don't necessarily need to learn them fully for your architecture interview, but you need to understand them at a high level and be able to discuss their strengths and weaknesses. Using modern mobile development stack can improve your chances in the interview. Drop a comment if you've seen this happen. All right, the third common mistake is not considering alternative design choices. That means when you suggest a technical decision, without discussing any alternatives. For example, you might say that you would use WebSockets for real-time updates. That sounds great, right? But what if you never mention the trade-offs? WebSockets add significant complexity. You need to maintain a persistent connection, handle disconnects, and deal with scalability issues on the backend. It's not just adding a line of code, it affects infrastructure and costs. And for an MVP version of a newsfeed, do we really need real-time updates? Probably not. A much simpler alternative would be to use short polling, just fetching updates every 30 seconds. Sure, it's not as elegant, but it's easier to implement and good enough for initial version. Interviewers love when candidates talk about things like that, saying something like, we could start with short polling for simplicity and later move on to WebSockets for real-time updates. And you're not just throwing in buzzwords, you're actually showing that you can make reasonable decisions based on trade-offs. For senior and staff level roles, it is a requirement to discuss alternatives and their trade-offs. A good approach would be to name multiple technical solutions, then choose one of them and explain why you did that. This shows the breadth of your knowledge. For example, you can explain REST API versus GraphQL, MVC versus NVVM, or cursor-based pagination versus limit offset pagination. But you don't need to name frameworks or technical approaches that are absolutely irrelevant to the problem. Talk about the ones that are applicable to your specific problem and weigh their pros and cons. And finally, the last common problem is poor timing. I've interviewed a lot of great engineers, but who were unable to finish on time their problem. The common pattern on a 45-minute meta-style interview is the person covers requirements in 10 minutes, then spends 20 to 25 minutes on API and data model, and then has only 10 minutes left for high-level design, which is one of the most important parts. They struggle with drawing boxes and arrows for 10 minutes, and then we have to wrap up. That means there is no time left for follow-up questions or deep dives. And without them, the interviewer doesn't have enough signal to evaluate the candidate and decide to pass them. That is a real problem. Here's a timing template that usually works in a 45-minute interview. 10 minutes for clarifying requirements. 10 to 15 minutes for API and data model. Another 10 to 15 minutes for high-level design. And the last 10 minutes for additional questions and deep dives. You should be aware of time in this type of interview and practice with a timer. How can you improve your timing? The first recommendation is obvious. Just practice more by yourself or in mock interviews. By the way, I offer mobile system design mock interviews. Feel free to book them on my website. All right, second recommendation here. Put more emphasis on API design in your preparation. Learn common patterns and approaches so you can do it faster. Many mobile engineers don't do this frequently at their jobs. They either work with an existing API or they have backend engineers who are 
covering this area in their team. That's why they usually struggle with the API design part. So for mobile system design, you need to do it yourself. So I highly suggest spending some time mastering this skill. I would love to hear if you've made these four or similar mistakes in your past architecture interviews. Please write a comment. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. All right, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and see you in the next one.